All right, welcome back, grade nines. Um, I'm going to work today on the the game that we're working on, the platform racer. And so here you can see the screen right now. I'll just quite quickly go through the things that we have here just so that you can have a sense of what's going on. And I'm just going to, I think, move my myself over there. Okay, so um, right now if I run the game, I have the intro logo um screen followed by the start menu the platform racers when i click the play button then we go into uh, level one and level one has a nice sound effect of the engine driving and i believe we can jump um what do i use for jump i thought i used the up arrow so that's why it's a little okay, let me just double check here what i use for jump Uh, up arrow, yep. Yeah. So what happened there? What did that happen? Oh, there it goes. Okay. And I remember last time um, we tweaked the jump speed and the, uh, what's the other variable drop speed. And so I have this real nice, like, when it hits the ground, it kind of, like, bounces a little bit. And I really like that. I don't know if I'll keep that or not, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Anyway. I like this. I'm noticing the tree um, is behind, but then also the tree is um, planted so that it looks like it's in the middle of the road and somehow I go in front of it. And that kind of breaks the, the illusion. Um, and so to help out with that, I, I can simply move the tree back a little bit. Um, or I could, that's probably what I should do. Um, or I could add another vertical column for like green shrubs along the along the thing, along the, um, I'm not sure how I do that, but anyway, adding some layers to this so that it looks like it's right, because right now it looks like the tree is kind of in the middle of the road, and yet I drive in front of it somehow, even though I'm at the edge of it, so, okay, enough of, enough of that right now, we can tweak those kind of, those visual things pretty easily by just moving trees up like this, that kind of thing, um, and changing the go-to location, uh, actually, I can try to tweak that right now. It looks like the Y in the Y direction went to negative 70, so it's a negative 80, I'll put negative 70, and just see how that looks. Okay, so in this tutorial, I want to show, or this, there we go, oh, now it's in front of the, the uh, car, and the reason why it's in front of the car is because it's the one that I dealt with last, and moved around last, so I think I can even just simply, like, move this car like that, and then it might be in front. If that doesn't work, there's another trick. Yeah, that works. The other trick is that you can actually go to looks tab and you can tell, you can say, um, you can say go to the front layer or you can tell it to go to the back or whatever, or go forward a certain amount of layers. Anyway, the layers are um, like how far back or how far forward an, um, a sprite is compared to other sprites. So you can't go behind the background, but you can go behind other sprites. Uh, okay, so today what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce, um, I said this was a platform racer, so I, I'm, you can decide to do your game a little bit differently if you want to, but generally what I'm going to do is I'm going to create platforms, little roadways that appear um, on di maybe, maybe three different layers, so this is the ground layer and then maybe one layer up and another layer uh, that you can jump in between, and ultimately I think I'm going to have it so that you're... Um, you're dodging things. Um, I think that's what I want to do. Um, it, I could change my mind, but so if there's something on the bottom layer that you know, like a little brick wall that you don't want to drive into, you have to jump onto the next layer, that kind of thing. Or if there's coins that you need to collect on the top layers, you go up there and then go down. It could be something like that too. I also want to have it so that you can drive forward and backwards a little bit. And so um, I'm going to start with that one and then we're going to add platforms and then we'll just see how far we get today. Um, we might be able to add in coins or things that we collect as well. So, um, okay, so quick, quick overview of what we've done here, just so you can see where we're at. Again, a reminder um, that you can take a look at my code if you just search for um, Daniel Atkins, Daniel, capital D. Here, I'll open another browser here. If you go to Scratch, 
and you go under the search thing and you say Daniel at oh, Atkins you should be able to find my channel and I have shared it so it sh should come up for you it's right here on my search but um, try this out why would you want to do this when you're making your own game the reason is especially if you have two screens like this would be ideal if you had say your your Chromebook on one screen and another maybe I don't know if your phone or some other computer on the other this would be ideal because you could actually go inside you can click on see inside and you can actually see all the code and compare that to the one that you're working on so um, just know that it's there it's available and sometimes that's helpful especially if you have multiple screens if you only have one screen it's a lot harder to navigate from one to the next but anyway um, so here we have here we have basically the movement of the driver you'll notice that most of the code is on the driver and that's because the driver is a much more complex uh, sprite compared to the other ones the game logo for instance is just it shows up at the start has this kind of its ghost effect basically it goes from um, you can't see it to showing up so it, it like appears uh, and then it hides away when the start menu comes on and the start button um, it I guess I can go to this name first this thing doesn't show up until the start menu shows up and then it goes away as soon as you go to level one same thing with this except for this uh, green um, play button is actually what activates level one so when it's clicked you activate level one and I appreciate that this text is probably too small for you to read let me zoom in a little bit there but you can see when the sprite is clicked broadcast level one and hide uh, the tree is um, very similar to the cloud, almost identical. The What we have here is uh, initially it hides and it shows up only when you receive level 1, the broadcast level 1. It goes to a certain location, off screen almost, uh, and then it shows. And then it keeps on changing uh, its X position by negative 10, which means that it goes from the right to the left of the screen. Uh, and it keeps doing that until it gets so far to the left that it's almost out of the screen. And then what happens is, um, here, let's just show this thing here. There you go. So it starts way over here. As soon as it gets so far to the left that it's kind of out of the screen, uh, then actually what we do is we hide it. We wait a random amount of time, and then we, we let it reappear. And this gives the kind of the illusion that um, it's a different tree. Now, what would be even better is if, like, say, we resized it, or um, then for sure it would look like a different tree. So we could do things like that, but um, for now, it just gives it helps give the illusion that this this uh, vehicle is moving because we don't expect in real life that a tree can just slide across, like, can move down the road. So uh, we tell our our brain that no, it's, the tree's not moving; it must be the vehicle. So the other thing is the cloud, and the cloud is, is exactly the same. It just starts in a different position because it's in the sky, and we have it moving slower. So you can see the cloud moves slower. Why? Because things that are further away appear to move slower to us uh, when we're driving. So um, hopefully that gives you the right illusion. Again, the tree's in front, so you just have to click on this thing, and then now it's in front. Okay, so now I want to move make this vehicle so it can move back and forth a little bit I'll give the I want to give the user a sense that they have control of this vehicle so they can go faster or slow down uh, to a point they can't go right out of the screen and they can't go right out of the screen on the other side so um, to a point we'll have to set up some cutoffs of how far we want them to go um, and also we want to really work on the mechanics of this so that it feels right um, you don't want to be like you click going forward and it's like boom it's there that doesn't feel like a uh, challenging enough it's, it's a little bit too overpowered for your your character so um, this code is going to look very similar to this one here so let me let me zoom in there I can't zoom in too well without making this small so I'm gonna make that small all right so when I receive level one Forever, wait until the up arrow is key pressed, sorry, and touching that color. So um, that's for jumping. You can only jump when you're on the ground. And I think we should make it so, well, I'm not sure if you can break. And we could, we'll see how it works. Let's make it so that the, um, 
let's make it so that you can actually move in the air. That's more, a lot of games are like that, where you can actually jump and then move your character in the air. So I, I don't mind doing that. It's not quite as realistic. Um, sorry, what I just did there here is just right click on, on when I receive level one. So right click on that and click on the duplicate. And now you have two copies of it. Uh, and why? Because we're going to actually just switch up arrow to the right arrow. That means, uh, in this case, going faster. Uh, and we're going to change, um, instead of set jump speed to 20, we're going to take that out of there. And we're going to go to motion. We're going to grab the X um, uh, change X by 10. I'll try that. A 10 is probably going to be too much, but let's just see. So let's just see what that does right now. So if I click it to activate it, then I can move my character. Yeah, and I can move forward, but I can't move back. 10 seems a little bit fast, but um, we'll keep it at that for now. Now I want to do the same for going backwards. So again, I'll duplicate this. Scroll down a bit so you can see. And instead of right arrow, now we're going to the left arrow. We're going to keep the touching the color thing for now. We might end up taking that. And now we're going to change X by a negative value. So it goes backwards. And um, we could just go back negative 10. And I'm going to show you why this will actually, um, actually not feel right. Um, so let me, let me make this large again. Actually, maybe I can make it full screen. Um, I'll move me up here. Okay. So to go forward now, feels okay, it feels a little fast, but to go backwards, actually because, um, yeah, it feels like it's, it's, it goes backwards too fast, like, you want to be able to slow down, but you'll notice that it's like the same speed as the tree, so they go back together, and I don't think you want to have quite that much control, hmm, I'm not sure. The other thing is I'm noticing that I can't jump uh, and move at the same time, and I don't like it. <laughs> because it's more like a, a classic video game if you can move in the air. So I'm going to just change that again. Um, that's a, again, that's a fix by, i to make this small again. Um, the way to fix that is to take out the touching color gray. And again, we could always bring it back, but let's just take this whole thing out. We're just going to look to see if the right arrow is pressed and not if it's touching the gray. And what that means is just that you can move in the air. And so then when you drive, I can go forward, I can go backwards, and I can go forward and jump. And it's a much nicer feel to it. So you can see that there, but I can go forward and I can keep on going forward as I jump forward. Keep going back. Yeah, actually, I don't know. Maybe it's okay that it looks like it stops. Although the wheels keep turning, so that's kind of kills the illusion. Let's let's say if we we made it just minus minus five. Let's just see what that looks like. So we're driving, we can, we're braking, we're going forward. And we're slowing down. You want, yeah, this kind of like forces you to keep going. Although now the going backwards feels painful. Like you're trying to push really hard to go backwards. So there might be some happy medium. You could also go minus like minus 15. But here the problem is now you're actually going backwards. Which is, is good. It actually feels better for like the control of being able to move around the screen easily. Um, so you could do this as well, but it doesn't, it loses all the realism. Uh, you know what? You can go in reverse in the car. I don't know. Maybe it's okay. It just means you're shifting really quickly. Okay. We'll leave it like that for now. And just, uh, we can tweak all that. We can even make the size of the car smaller if we want more. Like right now, you, there's not a lot of different places you can be on the screen. Um, so it might be nice change that but let's let's just move on for now and we can do all those kind of tweakings as long as you understand what's going on here uh, and feel free to tweak it yourself right now um, and just to get to where you like it okay let's continue um, 
let's add uh, platforms that come across and so there's different layers so what will that look like well they should look just like these um, the roads and for now they're just gonna look real basic they're just gonna be gray rectangles but I want them to be this color gray so um, I'm gonna create a new sprite and hopefully I can reference this color so how do we create a new sprite we go to this little cat plus uh, symbol it says choose a choose a sprite and we're not going to choose a sprite we're actually going to paint one okay and um, what I want to do is make a rectangle so uh, down here is a rectangle and I want it its outline and, and the fill of it to both be gray um, so I'm going to actually click on the color and then click on this eyedropper go over to here oh I can't do it that is interesting so um, but I really want it to be that gray so um, I thought I could do that Wow but I was wrong so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna bring over the backdrop this is the beauty of this you can click on the stage you can grab this um, I'm gonna move my guy up here again myself up there uh, this level one because it's got the gray in it and I'm going to click and bring it over to the sprite and what will that do is it'll make a copy of it that will go into sprite one so actually sprite one now has a costume that looks like the backdrop which is a little bit awkward but that's okay we just want I just wanted to use this um, color here now hopefully I can now select that color um, so if I click fill a color I can go click select the color that's good now I go back to my original costume and now I have it there um, and the outline uh, let's go to that hmm, okay the outline I can I can change after so let's uh, let's just make the rectangle you can see it's I'm um, you can see the little crosshairs in here this is the center of your sprite and so I'll just delete that right now. You want to make the the rectangle um, more or less around that, like centered with that. Okay, so I've just centered it like that. You can see right now that it's way too big of a platform, so I can resize it right now. Now's a good time. Um, I think I'll make it even a little smaller. It needs some thickness so that the car doesn't fall through it, and I'll make it that thick for now. The question is, should I make the whole screen or should I make half the screen? I don't know. I'll just make it something like this. Um, and I want the outline to be gray, so now is a good time to actually click on it and change the color so it's the same color. Or I could have gotten rid of the outline. That would be the other way. Just make a no, no outline. All right, so I have a rectangle here that I can click and move around. It's the same color as the ground. This other level here, I don't need this. I can get rid of that. I just want the rectangle. And so we'll have a rectangle there and maybe up here, that kind of thing. Now, here is where it might make sense to make clones of this when you create it. Um, so maybe hide this one, but then when you when you create a clone of it. Um, and so I think I'll show you how to do that just because it's an interesting kind of concept. We wouldn't have to use clones. We could use two platforms and they just come at random times, uh, similar to the cloud and the trees. But I think maybe it's time to learn something more interesting here. Um, the code for this, however, is going to be very similar to the tree. So let's go ahead and click on the tree and we can actually grab the code and drop it into Sprite 1, which I should rename already. I'm going to rename this as, um, let's just call it a platform. Okay, and platform. Uh, this is actually going to be when when the game starts. You want this platform not to appear, and then when I receive level one, it's going to go to this location, which we're going to change that and show and repeat. And actually, it's not going to be when I receive level one. It's going to be when I when I start as a clone. So we're going to create some clones. So let's just make a program that just randomly sends out platforms. Okay. So when I receive level one, to create a sense of randomness, we're actually going to have a random waiting period. Um, but at the very start, I, I suggest that we wait a specific amount of time. You want to give the players enough time to get used to your game moving back and forth before you start sending platforms out. So I'm going to just wait uh, 
Well, actually, I only want to wait one second right now. In the actual game, I might maybe five or three seconds, something like that. Um, but actually, because I'm testing it, I don't want to wait five seconds before I see if, if it's doing it. So I'm just going to say wait one second. And then I am going to, um, again, we'll use the forever uh, loop. So bring that in. And I'm going to forever create clones. So where is the creating a clone down here near the, the bottom? Create clone of myself. So this thing is hidden. Every one second is create a new clone. And you can actually tell uh, when it starts, when it when I start as a clone, what you can tell it what to do. And what we're going to tell it to do is when it starts as a clone, you're going to go to this location. Probably not that location, though. Let's let's update that. Let's we want that to be something like this. Maybe it's kind of out of view. Uh, and you can see the X and Y location there. It should be updated here. So go to this location. Okay. So get rid of that old one. And then we're going to show, repeat until the exposition is is um, less than negative 270. I'm not sure if that's what we're going to want. It might be actually further out. It might be closer to this number, 330. Uh, and then change X by 10. And now if we keep it the same speed as the tree, I think it might have, uh, it'll look more like a platform that's, you know, stuck in, in space. So, uh, and then it's going to hide and wait some random time before it goes. Okay. Um, I think instead of picking a random amount of time and then coming back, I am just going to have it instead of hide and all that stuff, I'm going to actually have it just delete. So uh, delete this clone. Okay. So, and I guess this then doesn't need to be forever. Let's just, I took a few things out there without talking about it, but the forever we don't need, because I think we're going to just delete it and then it will just keep creating clones. Now, right now this forever will just go like clone, 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 clone. And it'll just be like infinite, not quite, but you know, a lot of um, platforms being created. So we need to put some kind of, delay in here otherwise things will get out of hand so we're going to put a delay and that delay actually should be a random number between right now it says between 1 and 10 but i i think uh 10 seconds is forever in a video game so i'm going to say between 1 and let's go 4 for now now we could also create this so there's a um, an actual level um that we pre-plan to make sure the the, the levels um come at the right time and you kind of tell more of a story this is just a random story where levels will just be coming at you so let's just take a look and see what this does maybe i forgot something right, let's, let's take a look and see all right so there's our first level there there's the next one i want to know if it's if i put it oh there we go i was able to jump on it and then got to the cloud yeah now you're going to notice something that you can jump through the platforms and then you keep jumping. So that's a glitch that we're going to solve. Uh, we might not have time to solve it on this video, but we'll do another one where we solve it. We're hanging in on the cloud too. There's some gray in the cloud. <laughs> we might have to change this color. So instead of gray, because if we want to keep that cloud, we should not be able to jump into it. But here you can see definitely that um, platforms are being made. And sometimes a couple platforms come because it's just a second later and then another platform gets created. If we change this to between zero and four seconds, so you can see what will happen here. We should see some platforms that actually um, get attached to each other. If we play this long enough, maybe I'll change it from zero and one second. There, so you can see them coming pretty quick. Um, and it should be a random number between here, but it almost seems like it's a really predictable number. So I don't know what's going on there. I said 0.5. And yeah, now they're getting all stuck together. <laughs> so we don't want that. So that's why I thought between one and one and three.
Okay, so it's not bad. I want to prevent them from being able to jump through the bottom. I don't want to have to be able to do that. Uh, and I can show you how to do that. Um, but it's not a bad height. Um, actually, that's maybe kind of a line. It should be a little bit lower. So I'll, let me change that. So instead of minus... Um, okay, I just want to have this. It should be a bit lower because I'm kind of high check how high I can jump here. Oh, I gotta run everything to make this work. How about that? Is that enough? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So I can barely get off the ground here with this jump. So maybe this platform is gonna have to be this high, but actually I want it so that you can drive under the platform. So, okay, I, I might have to tweak my jump as well. Okay, before I do that, though, yeah, like, that's good, because you can drive underneath it. Maybe a little bit lower here. Um, so, instead of 43, let's go to 50. Negative 50. It's a little bit further down. And then I want to put it. Yeah, that's better. Just underneath it. Okay. So obviously I've, I've got to work on my other one. Now, um, we also it could be at this position here, or it could be at another position. And the other position would be a slightly higher. We could have varying levels, but I think we'll just do two levels for now. And so the next position um, we can guess. So. Um, How do I want to do this? Do I want to make it a random occurrence? Sure. Um, so we're going to pick a random number between 1 and 2. I think both values will come up. Hmm. Okay, wait, I'm going to duplicate this. Um, no, that's not smart. Uh, I need to, this X position, I want it to be either 337 or another value. And I could put random range um, between 330, about 337 um, and some uh, other value that's not Y, sorry, between I should do the Y. Negative 50. Sorry about that. I could do a random range between negative 50 and say 0. Somewhere like that. And put that in here. But the problem with this is that it's going to it's going to be up there or down there. And it may not be within jumping range. And so I want it to either be 0 or negative 50. And so um, but I, I want it to be only sometimes that. Um so, I'm going to set, I'm going to set a variable, I'm going to make a variable, make a variable, and I'm going to call this variable, um, platform uh, height, like that, okay. And this platform height, it's either going to be 0 or 50. And I'm certain there's another better way to do this. It's just not coming to mind right now. So I'm going to do the, the awkward way of doing this. And maybe this is not that awkward. Uh, I'm going to set. So if you go to your variable thing, you can bring out your set um, player platform height to... Um, a random number be between um, negative 50 and 0. I could do 1 and 2 as well, but anyway, I'm going to just choose that. And then I'm going to create a thing that if, if else thing statement here. Again, I should move this away so that we don't get caught up. 
I'm going to make this smaller too. Okay. So uh, if, so I'm going to first set the platform height to this random number. And then I'm going to say if, and go to the variable platform height is gray less than, let's say. So I'm going to say less than a negative 25. Okay, that means that it's it's in the lower, then I want a lower platform. Then we're going to say, um, go to the lowest place. Otherwise, we're going to go to the, and I just duplicated that, go to the higher spot. And I'm not sure if 50, 50 pixels is actually the range I want, but okay, hopefully this makes some sense. It's kind of a silly way to do this. Uh, but I think it's going to work, and I just can't think of the better way right now. Um, I'm creating a variable platform height. I'm assigning it a value between negative 50 and 0. So it could be negative 50, negative 49, uh, negative 30, negative 1, or 0. And then I'm saying if the platform height is less than negative 25, so it's between negative 50 and negative 25, then I want to to become the lower platform. I want to create a, low, a clone of a lower platform. Otherwise, I'm going to create a uh, uh, clone of the higher platform. That's all I did. Okay, it's a little random platform generator here. So when I start as a clone, we're gonna go through that little that little uh, juggling of where it starts at, and then it's gonna show. It's gonna repeat until it goes onto the screen, and then it deletes the clone. So let's just see how this works out. Okay, so now if I run this, and again I don't know if zero is, is high. So that's the higher one. It should be one that I can't quite reach. Um, and I have a feeling that... Should, yeah, so it's like that. Oh yeah, it's, it's a little bit too... It's not high enough. So I can still keep this code. I don't need to change that. It's just a random number. Again, I could have done 1 and 2 and done 1.5. Um, but this one, I feel like 0 is a little too low. Let's actually make it 50. Let's see how that works. So, yeah, that's probably better. So I can jump on it. No, I need to go even a little higher. <laughs> let's go to, uh, let's go to 100. Let's go all the way to 100. Oof. That might be a bit too high. Let's go to 75. So again, I could play around with this to make sure, but what I want is I want the lower platform to clear it. Oh my goodness, this negative 50 is no good either. Let's go negative, negative 40. I want it to run into the platform. Okay, so that's good. I'm clearing it there. So I can get on it, and that, yeah, that's looking good. Negative 40 and 75 are looking good right now. Again, I can resize this and readjust it all, but right now that's looking okay. All right. Now, um, we'll leave it at that for now. I know I'm already over half an hour here, so um, I have this platform thing. You can play around with this and try to send out more platforms. You can. Uh, you could also change when uh, the clones happen. You can have more clones. You could actually even create two of these. Um, you can just right click on it, duplicate. Now I have two platforms. Now when I run this, there'll be two platforms being generated all the time. And that could might be just a nice mix. There we go, I got two of them. Okay, I should maybe fix my jump just before we, we go. And I really need to get rid of this cloud. <laughs> because right now it's, it's really easy to jump on platforms. Um, so let me just fix the jump. That'll be my last thing here. Um, I want to go a little bit higher with my jump. How do I do that? Go to the driver, um, and I'm going to change my my initial jump. Instead of 20, let's go 30. Let's just see what that does. I think that's too much. Let's see. Too many things to jump on here. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. So, from 20 to 
20 to 30, let's go 25. Ooh, that's not bad. That feels not bad. And we've got to fix it so you can't jump through the bottom. Um, but we'll do that next next video. It's close. Um, really hard to tell if I got the right height. I feel like it's just really close. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'll fix, figure, figure that out later. Hopefully you're able to make some platforms and have your car driving back and forth. All right, I'll make another video here shortly and um, we, can, we can keep her going. So hopefully make sure to save your progress all the time. We'll see you in the next video.